All right, let's talk a little bit about type coercion. So type co converting between types is more tricky than you might think. We talked about how adding 1 to 255, getting you 0, is uh, surprising if you're not a programmer. Well, this one surprises a lot of people who um, find themselves just getting into the C world. So we make a 16-bit um, integer. We allocate it, we assign it to be 260. And then later on, usually there's a few hundred lines of code in there just to confuse you. You usually don't line it up to be quite as obvious as this example. You have made a smaller integer, and you assign it to be the value of the other one. And so this program uh, will confidently compile with no errors or warnings, and confidently tell you that 260 is equal to 4. That may not be the behavior you're expecting. And the good news is that in this simple form, you can, you can get GCC to give you a warning if you, enable w, if you enable all warnings. Go and Rust protect against this by making it a little harder to uh, inadvertently um, assign from one type to another. Um, in C, it's called type coercion, because you are literally coercing one type to fit into another, and just dropping any additional data that's in the way that won't fit. You didn't need it anyway, right? So in Go, 16-bit number 260, 8-bit uh, number 0, print the two out, disallow, it's disallowed, won't compile, you get an error message. Rust does the same thing. Both tell you that you have a type problem. The Rust message is a whole lot more long-winded, but they both boil down to the same thing. Now, the downside of this is when you want to transform from a smaller type to a bigger type. This is actually always a safe operation, because if you're going from an 8-bit number, uh, the entire range can always be, be ex an unsigned 8-bit number. The entire range can always be expressed by an unsigned 16-bit number. But both Go and Rust, because of that protection, will actually complain and tell you that uh, um, going from one type to the other can't be done without a cast. You probably don't want to do it. The Rust, mes the Rust message does at least give you um, a clue as to what command you should use to, run to do this. So the most easy way to do this is to force the issue. We're going to declare, so here in Go, we just say uint 8n, force it in there. In Rust, we'll say as u8. And at this point, um, there's been a huge debate in the Rust community as to whether as should actually be unsafe. It's currently not, because that would litter an awful lot of existing code with unsafe. But it can lead to data loss, because by typing that as, or in Go, by typing the uint 8, you're telling it, I understand what's going on, hold my beer, do the conversion. And so now 260 in both languages does equal 4 as well. That's great, you can join the C club. If that wasn't what you intended, then let's hope that you remember to write some extra checks before you force the code, before you force the number, and that you understand your program well enough to know that you're not going to have that problem and what to do if you do. So Rust uh, tried to uh, make this a little easier um, by um, having a trait called into. Now into allows you to uh, say um, variable name dot into, and the compiler will try and figure out what it's going in, um, what it's being converted into. And if there is a implementation of that trait for, to go from one type to another, it will automatically work. So in this tiny example, small u8255, big u16, small dot into, will work, because going from a u8 to a u16 is safe. And Rust has carefully and um, painstakingly um, added in entries for uh, all of the safe conversions that will not fail. And it hasn't entered in um, conversions for all of the ones that are unsafe. So if you try and do big u16 into a u8 with into, will not compile because that's not implemented. And so Rust introduced a second one. I know <laughs> Rust complexity can be a little overwhelming sometimes, but it's often because of cases like this, where into only provides the safe ones, but sometimes it's safe, sometimes it's not. So you have a 16-bit number um, that is 250. It can be converted into a U8. You have a 16-bit number that's 260. Well, it's not going to fit into a U8. So maybe when you're converting your numbers, you want a way to know, will it fit, or am I going to have an issue?
am I going to potentially lose some of my data, or worse, mess up the in what system I'm using for indexing into an indexing into an array and cause all the problems that we had before? So, try into came along. Try into is the same as into, with the exception that it returns a result, and the result will be OK and the valid number, or it will be an error telling you that you can't convert the number. And so you can come up with something like this, where I create a um, set of numbers from 250 to 260 in a U16, convert that into an iterator, flat map. And what flat map does is it says just keep the good ones, throw away the errors, and collect it, print it out. It just shows you 250 through 255, the valid conversions. It successfully detected that the other ones weren't going to work. A lot of the time, you'd actually want to check the errors and maybe do something with them. For the sake of example, though, what we're showing here is that Rust gives you the way to track the problem, keep, um, keep a hold of it, and uh, do the right thing. And what the right thing is, of course, depends on your program. Hi, I'm Herbert Wolferson, Arden Labs' Rust trainer. If you'd like to see more Rust content, click subscribe to our channel and be notified as it arrives.